Hey guys, what's going on? This is Levi DePero. Please like and subscribe. All right, cool. So I turned the camera the other way because um, I'm doing some work here. Uh, so obviously, as you know now, I got the D DTF printer. Um, I did a video where I remove the side panels, both on this side and that side, and I removed the back. Um, now, the reason why I did that is because I... I had to DIY it because I'm converting this printer to a DTF printer myself. So what I did was I had one of these things right here. And what this is used for is so you can um, screw into um, plastic. You usually get these when you have like um, your CIS kit. Um, so if you go on Amazon, there's a CIS kit that includes this. Um, and it does not come with cartridges. So the purpose of this is so you can use your old cartridges from the actual printer. You can screw into it, put a hole, and then create a whole CIS kit system. Um, but we're not, I, we're not doing that today. So all we're doing, um, actually, <laughs> my apologies. I already did the video. Um, basically, all I'm showing you is... Um, get a screw, get a, uh, what do you call that thing? Um, electric screwdriver and you want to drill a hole on the side, but it's, it was easier to show you when this was put up, taken apart. Um, oh, also, uh, I want to say this. If you have your machine, whether it be a printer, a vinyl cutter any type of machine you have in your house uh or your business even your screen printing machine right obviously your screen printing machine didn't come like this you have to put everything together so that's why you see screen printers are easier to maneuver around their screen printing machine because they know how to tweak it how to you know fix it and all that stuff now um there was a video i saw and had i not think about it, it would have been very discouraging to actually get a DTF system. Um, and what it was, was like, uh, the printer was every, the whole cover of the printer was removed and all it was was just wires everywhere. That was intimidating. But had I not thought about the fact that as a screen, as a um, shop, you have to know your machines and you have to know how to use your machines. You know, you have to know how to break them apart because especially if you're a one man show, you would be considered the maintenance guy. Because if you had a major operation, you'd have obviously a tech department, a maintenance department, you know, a customer service department. So you're basically all that. So stop getting scared of your machine. All right. OK, cool. So what we're going to do right now is um, we're going to open this so we can take a look. All right. So obviously I got this used. So this is I bought a used 1400 um Epson stylus because I knew I was going to be converting it and these machines usually are in the upwards of the cheapest you can get this especially on Amazon is $800. That's the cheapest. After that it goes in the thousands to 1200 to 1500 it depends where you go. Right? And if you put in the two-year warranty and all that, then, yeah, it's going to be a lot of money. So I knew I was going to be using this for DTF. And DTF typically has issues. And although I got this printer, I knew I was going to be converting it. So what I did was I went to the back. So there's two screws on this side. There's two screws on that side. There's two screws. What you're going to do is unscrew both on this side. And that side in the back there's one screw right um you want to unscrew all that and then when you're done unscrewing everything first you want you want to pry this open but the way to do that is you go underneath and you find what little um tab bar you push it up and it will release the back for this once you remove this oh oh cool still removed so once you remove this, right, 
Nice. Now it's completely sealed. All right. That was great. So once you remove this, um, what you're going to do is you're going to, um, let me demonstrate for a second. So you'll have your waist ink line that's attached to something already. You want to detach it, right? Be gentle, detach it, and then um, put a hole in one in this. Uh, go at least, I'd say, about maybe three, about two inches from the bottom um, to here. You make like a little hole. Um, you can either drill it in or you can use this or whatever you have to make a hole. Just make a hole. And then what you want to do is remove this clip while you're holding this. You remove the clip. You hold this. The reason why you want to hold this after you move the clip is um, this has a tendency to go backwards. It wants to be inside the printer. So it's going to try to push itself back. Right. So you hold it and then you take this cover you push it through once you push it through you want to put this metal this metal clip you want to put it back and what it does it it stops it from going backwards all right and then you want to grab one of these hose thingy uh these tube light things and once you grab it you want to push it in all the way so it could be secure once it's in it's secure or you can get one of those uh bridge on Amazon so all it is is it it'll push this this end and that end together and once you do that you have a connection all right now once you've connected to the holes or the the tube you want to grab a bottle right me what I did was I just grabbed my um, my dish bottle dish soap it was done and um i don't know if you know about me but i like to reuse things so that way i keep a uh i contribute to the environment so what i did was i connected to this and then after i did that i put it on the side right here right so i put it on the side somewhere you could put it anywhere you want it's all up to you okay so as you can see, this is not going back. It's connected to this and it's swirls going down inside um, my dish soap uh, container, right? My empty dish soap container. Or you could choose a bottle, whatever you have that's available to you. Okay, so that is for your waste ink tank. And the reason why you want to do that is because when you have, let me open this real quick. All right, when you have the whites, that's these two right here, they're labeled W. And as a matter of fact, you know what? Let me take them out. I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Okay, cool. So I've emptied this completely. All right, that's the ink head. Um, when you put the inks, it already tells you how it's, how it's supposed to be set up. You'll find out why I have the W's. Okay, as you can see inside the ink head, you want to, when you push this, you want to make sure you line it up correctly with this, yellow with yellow, and then you push the tab forward, and then you can open it, okay? All right, so I'm going to clean the print head, so that's why, um, that's the reason why I remove all the printers, I mean, uh, cartridges, uh, anyways. All right, so... Like I dropped something, it's okay. Okay, so what you're saying here, don't get intimidated. Um, uh, first, let me give a shout out to McLeod Technologies. All right, that's him right here. This is his company. All right, this is where I got my ink from. Um, whenever you purchase your ink, if it's a really good company, you want to continue to use them because. They usually have um, CIS systems that you can use. Um, and if you're having trouble, you can go back to them. And also, um, if they make their own ink, that means they may have a, uh, I forgot what it's called, that color program where it, it matches your ink to the printout. So you can see everything exactly how it's supposed to be. Um, anyways, 
So whenever you get your ink, first you cut out the bags, obviously, um, and then you set it up, right? When you set up your inks, you want to make sure you indicate on top what it is. I know it's obvious that yellow will look yellow and black will be black, but right on top of them, you'll understand why in the future, because when you open that bottle, the first thing you're going to be looking at is what it is, and then you're going to be looking at the color. It's going to trigger in your mind that, okay, cool, that's the color I'm using. I'm not going to put it inside the the light sign, uh, was that light magenta, okay? And when you go to use the white ink, you won't get confused because, um, oh, so right on the bottle, right on top, right on this, right? And you remember how this was formulated right here, the yellow, black, W for white, W for white. But as you notice, the color that's on there is, if you can see it, yeah. It's light magenta, no, yeah, light, um, light cyan and light magenta. And the light magenta is right next to the regular magenta. So that's why you gotta be careful. You know what I'm saying? If you're not paying attention and you don't label this correctly, the minute you open it, you may end up putting it in the wrong slot. All right? So just, to help you out, label everything, all right? Once you have everything labeled, have your ink labeled, and this is the order that it's, the print is supposed to go in. Yellow, K for black, um, light uh, cyan, which would be white. That's why I put the W on there, so I don't end up putting the um, cyan ink inside the light cyan. All right, and then W for the magenta, so I don't end up putting the regular magenta inside the light magenta's um, uh, uh, cartridge, all right? So now you have everything labeled, then you take the syringe, all right, and you make sure the syringe is labeled. Now, obviously, the tips of them are going to be the color of the cartridge that you're going to use and also the ink that you use right but who knows maybe you like your syringe tips clean and it's good to color cord um yeah cut a, a color coordinate them and also to understand which one that you've been using like for example if you try use let's say the cyan on the white and there's pigments of cyan in here it may mess up your, your whites. Not much, but hey, who knows? Your whites might not be as white as you want it. Um, anyways, so you label your syringe, label your bottle, label your cartridges, right? So now you have a perfect system. Everything is set up. Once you've, once you've taken it, fill each one up, right? According to according to what it is again guys I was going to actually fill everything and show you how everything was I did the whole video broke down the printer so I could show you the printer so you don't have to get scared of it but that video for some reason messed up and then when I tried to reload it on the computer like the file was corrupted and really bad so it wasn't playing at all, so I had to delete it. All right, so uh, let me make this quick. Okay, cool. So this is the ink. This is the cartridge set up. That's how you're supposed to set it up. Yellow, K for black. And then you have light cyan, light magenta, um, dark mag uh, regular magenta, and regular cyan. All right. Inside the light cyan you want to put w and then you want to put the white ink on there w stands for white ink then you want to put w on the light magenta and you want to put white ink in there all right once you have that label and you put the inks then you start putting the inks in the other ones as they're supposed to in the order that they're supposed to now how i have this set up 
you should probably try to set yours up the same thing. And if you don't know the order, go back to your printer, right? And the printer will tell you. Now you know why I have the W in here. So you want to put the W, W. So now you see how this is set up. You set your printer cartridges the same way. Put the W's and then you put the white, you put the colors and then you're good to go. When you're done, you take them. Put them back inside. Uh, you may, you know what? Let me do that so I don't forget myself. So I'm just gonna demonstrate for you real quick. All right, so. Take a Sharpie, right? You have the Sharpie and just write. Sorry, you can't see it, right? You're just writing W so you can know this is white ink, but you can match it also to the colors. All right, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can match it to the colors. So there's the light cyan, light magenta, light cyan, light magenta, but you know they're both white, right? Same as this. So now you have everything coordinated and you're good to go. You do make sure you put a paper here. You can use regular paper, don't use your film yet. And then uh, do a print head cleaning. Once you do a print head cleaning, the printer will print out the paper and it'll show you how the print printer looks like. All right. If it's clogged, if it's okay to print, then you're good to go. And you want to do a print head cleaning every time you wake up and you go to your shop or you go to your printer, do a print head cleaning. So that way you can know your printer is doing fine. If your printer is not doing fine, your print head doesn't look okay and it's clogged. Instead of opening it and removing it, um, I'm going to link Juan's video that's going to show you how to clean it without removing the print heads and all that because that's intimidating to some people so we're gonna yeah so like i said that's intimidating to some people so we're gonna focus on seeing how we can um get this clean without having to remove everything all right okay again this is the setup and that's how you want to set up when you refilling your ink and then like i said you want to remove two screws here, two screws here in the back, and then one all the way in the back, and then drill your hole to put your waste ink line. All right? Then you route it to a bottle, whatever type of bottle you have. Okay? All right, cool. That was the look of the printer. See, um, so again, I had it broken down, but the video messed up, so... I'm just doing this on the fly. All right, please like and subscribe. This is Levi Apparel.